right, we're live. What's up, Beer and Sunshine friends? It's your pal, Tommy T, here with Susie and Nikki. And tonight, our very special guest, of course, Barry from Motorworks. And I say, of course, because they're always special, right? We always have some, all the local breweries here from the Tampa Bay area uh, doing our best to promote and represent local craft drinking here in the Tampa Bay area and really now all of Florida because we're part of Big Top Brewing Company and at Big Top you know we just we're in the process of opening our third location up in Gainesville Pensacola opened uh, I don't know, a month and a half ago now and things are going crazy there uh, but again we're really excited to have Barry from Motorworks and uh, we apologize if it's a little bit loud in the background we're trying to do the show while we're also doing trivia tonight here at Big Top Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, come on down and see the show live and play some trivia. Um, anyway, we're excited to be here. Barry, thanks so much for coming. Cheers, yeah, thank my friend. You. Cheers, yes. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> and if you guys haven't seen Susie's awesome video, she did her second video uh, this past week, go to our Facebook page. Uh, go to Beer and Sunshine. It's at Beer and Sunshine on Facebook. Um, and she did an incredible video talking about Lambic beers. Yeah, um, I did a video talking about the science behind the way that Lambics are created and all the microorganisms that go into and uh, what they do. And no, no exaggeration. It's as good as anything I've ever seen in like any TV show. Uh, my, my wife and I, we watched the, um, the uh, uh, America's Next Food Network star, which is an awesome show because like a reality show where they t train people and teach people how to be on camera, how to have their own show and talk about food, how to present the food, how to be like relate to people and all that kind of stuff. And she's absolutely stunning, obviously, but stunning on camera, which is a harder thing to do. You know, you can be pretty in person, but to be pretty on camera is a totally different animal. It's hard to smile. That's my hardest thing is to smile on camera. And you, you kill it. You do a great job. That works. She's blushing. I was saving the compliments for the camera. Uh, it looks like they can hear us just fine, even though they got trivia going on. So it's cool. Yeah. Right. Thanks, thanks for that. Appreciate it. Is that, is that Lee? Yeah. Hi, Lee. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Lee. Thank you. Uh, so, Barry, thanks for coming. Um, Motorworks is in Bradenton, right? Yeah. Where, 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 where are you guys located? What's your address there? So it's uh, 1014 9th Street West. 1014 9th Street. I've been there twice, I think. Okay. It's awesome. One of the best outdoor areas yes. of any brewery I've been that's to. Atmosphere in the atmosphere. Yeah, right? Super cool. Isn't it the largest in, uh, in Florida? Largest in Florida. It's actually the largest on this coast. Uh, wow. But, uh, you know, easier to say largest in Florida. Uh. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, apart from, like, uh, Jester King, Hill Farmstead, and uh, Stone, I think that we're actually, like, probably top five out there uh, as, term, uh, as far as, like, actual, like, size go. I mean, it's uh, for a dedicated beer garden. Like yeah. the lights, even like the tree that you guys got going there, like the little like it's my favorite oh, thing, it's especially when it actually gets colder out, which hopefully, fingers crossed, in a couple of months it will get cold again. Um, I love just sitting under the tree and just hanging out. It's so nice. I've had my Christmas party there for my company. Like it's it's definitely really? a favorite of mine. Yeah. Yeah, we do sure. a ton of parties. And you know what? We're due up for a good Florida winter. I mean, we get those, what, two, three days of cold. I think we're due up. It was cold like four years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're I, think I, was, I think I was there four years ago when it was cold because it was my one of my wife's work friends had a birthday gig there. Well, maybe it was three years ago. Maybe it was two years ago. I, but it was, they all blend it was, together. Don't they they all blend together. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, we, get, we do get cold, not cold, cold, but sometimes very cold, but we get cool winters here for sure. Like, where, I mean, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to cold, even though I'm from originally from New York. It's been a long time since I've been there. Um, I, I get cold easy, like you know, like a bitch. I mean, <laughs> no, no offense, ladies. I don't mean that in derogatorily okay. speaking. I mean that as in, you know, just being a weak man, a very weak man. <laughs> I am a weak um, man. And you guys are super dog friendly there, aren't you? We are, yes. Speaking of dog friendly, Iris is here from Satchel's, Satchel's Last, Last Resort with Snoopy. Oh this is an adoptable oh dog. Come on in, Iris. Come on in. The beautiful Iris from Satchel's Last Resort. Oh, and look at this one. Hi, Bud Bud. Oh, Hi. So he keeps growling at me. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah. No, he's a little camera sweetest. shot. He's, he's cute. He's How old is Snoopy? Oh, he's two buddy. years old. Oh, I don't have goodness. a treat for you. Carry a mix. You want a treat? He's usually oh, very loving, friendly, and huggy. There's and a lot going on. playing with other dogs. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. 
excited and nervous. Yeah, and nervous. <laughs> and he hasn't had a beer, probably. No, probably needs a beer. beer. Yeah, he'd feel better after beer. Oh, he could goodness. use one of Motorworks good brews. Or you guys pulp Friction? Yeah. Pulp Friction, yeah. Pulp Friction. Yeah. Pulp Friction? Yeah. Uh, pulp friction. Pulp friction. <laughs> Is that literally a dog beer? Uh, no, it's not a dog oh, beer. Although we should probably there are dog beers. Dog so, no, I've done a couple of events with the Senator on that, though, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. funny. And you guys, um, you can find Satchel's Last Resort on Facebook, and you have a website as well. Is yep. it dot .org or dot yeah. .com? Satchelslastresort.org. Okay, perfect. How old is Snoopy? He's two. He is two. two. He's a little buddy. He's so sweet. He is super oh. sweet. I and saw him right before the show, and he was so friendly, wagging his tail, and we were having a good oh time gosh. hanging out. And you guys are actually by appointment only, right? Because right at the moment. Right. It, just, it just gives better service to the people. They can stop out, but I mean, you might have to work. Where, where's, where's, staff. where's Satchel's uh, Last Resort located? We're located at east of 75, about two and a half miles off of Clark Road. It's okay. called 8101 Cohasco. Okay. Awesome. All right. And uh, uh, do, do you think he's a purebred? A pure breed? Or, or Probably is... not. I don't know. We always say mixed, even, we don't know. Even though I, like I have a, a doc who looks like a purebred, but I say mixed because I don't know. Yeah. Buddy, yeah. it's okay, buddy. It doesn't buddy. matter. He's too right. cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then uh, you guys have you guys have a website, right? And yeah, you have yes. a phone number? And yep, website, phone number, Facebook, find All us. All that stuff. Yeah, we'll make sure find a great home, please. He yes. has a great, loving home, loves playing with other dogs. And they have so many other cute dogs. If you, if you look at the last uh, few episodes that we've done here, what do we do? Is it number 12 for us? We're at 12, I believe. I don't know. How many times have you guys been on? At least half a dozen, right? Maybe? Oh, yeah. At least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They have some really adorable dogs. I've tried to convince my wife to take home <laughs> at least three of them so yes. far. <laughs> They are a little heart stealers. He's, he's challenging my ego. I want to take him home just so that he'll love me. So he'll stop growling at me. He would in five minutes. Oh, he he's would. just a nervous today. Oh, I just got to give him a treat or something, some food. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give him some food. We're best buddies. He loves food. He's very food-motivated. Cool. Well, thank you, Iris. Now he's just bored. He's done. Do you guys, you guys like, have any idea who you're going to bring next week? Uh, not yet. Well, well, we always have somebody. Well, we'll right. somebody. Well, well, thanks for keeping in touch and everything. I know you Thank keep in you. touch with uh, my wife, Lee, and, yes. and uh, yeah, keep us updated so we know who's coming and all that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring treats next time. Uh, I think that's I a hope great that's idea. A idea. I'll try to remember. Maybe you guys can remind me because I have a okay. terrible okay. memory. Yes, okay. you, you guys remind me, and we'll I'll do it for you. sure. <laughs> Guaranteed. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. And have a great night. All right, have a good night. Oh, you're so cute. Super cute. I love doing that. Love dogs. We have two. Had three, but had to put one down, unfortunately. Ice. Uh, I wouldn't pour one out because I wouldn't waste beer, but, you know, <laughs> one, we tend to pour one out. One, one of our lost homies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, back to MotorWorks. Um, how long has MotorWorks been there? I moved here in November of 14. That's when I really, like, I started getting into craft beer up in Charlotte, North Carolina in around 2010. And I moved here in November of 14. Uh was introduced to these guys who'd only been in business for like not even a year yet I think and MotorWorks I know is one of the first breweries that I heard of when you know I basically was googling like you know who's around what what craft breweries are here and got a lay of the land there weren't that many uh in in 14. No no I think we were like the 48th in the state we're over 300 now. Wow. Oh wow yeah and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we opened uh January 22nd of 14 so uh just around five years. Oh, It'll be okay. five years in January. All right. So oh, you guys, have a yeah. big party? Yeah, we are. Uh, Trying to plan yeah. it now when I can find a moment. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> we will be there. We will come there if you invite us. And, uh, we'll be invited. Yeah. I don't need the invite. I'll just crash it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'll drink beer. I mean, what am I going to do? <laughs> big spot. You just hide in the corner. And what, do you, what do you do there? What do you do at MotorWorks? Uh, so I'm the director of sales and marketing. I've okay. been there since the very beginning. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, so obviously you're, uh, you, are you guys, just, you guys are distributed, because I've had, I saw your beers up in uh, Gainesville yeah, when I was yeah, up there. We, yeah, we you're distribute um, in uh, most of the state and then also a little bit up in Ohio. All right. Ohio? Yeah. So like throughout the state and then. And then Ohio. And then Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a reason behind that? Is uh, there like a tie to Ohio? There, there, there are some ties to Ohio, and uh, we just have, you know, with all the snowbirds and whatnot, we uh, have a lot of uh, customers that come down for it, so oh. we send some beer up into the specialty shops up there. Awesome. It's pretty good. I always say some of my favorite people are from Michigan and Ohio. So good good people there in the Midwest. Uh, and now, you know, Indiana. Indiana has some pretty good folks. Uh, Johnny, one of the owners here at Big Top, he's from Indiana, uh, one of my favorite human beings, a.k.a. Handsome Johnny, I always call him. But, um, <laughs> and I just, we just keep randomly meeting people from Indiana. They seem like... And one of my good buddies, my friend, uh, I call him Crazy Jeff, who's definitely not watching. He never watches my show, unfortunately. I don't know why, but uh, Crazy Jeff's from Indiana. and uh, Oh, hi, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching. Yeah, he's, he's not watching. <laughs> and he lives around the corner from you, actually. So my one of my good friends, I go visit him in Bradenton. Yeah. He's literally 
uh, what's the name of the street? Yeah, it's kind of important. But he's right off of the down that downtown area just before the bridge. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, two, three minutes from you guys, I think? Something like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I can never seem to get him to go over there. I do actually always ask him to go over there when I'm in, over that way, but... We end up going to usually some crappy dive bar around the corner <laughs> if we go anywhere. Or an Irish bar. There's an Irish bar. There's a little uh, downtown strip. Mm -hmm. um, Are you talking about the caves? Uh, Just throwing things out there. I don't <laughs> know. It's in it's It's in like downtown, downtown Bradenton. There's one little road where there's a bunch of little bars. Mm -hmm. And there's an Irish oh, pub Street. there. Main Street. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's on Main Street. Yeah, right. That place. There you go. So Main Street. Yeah, I don't remember the name. It was a fun little place. There's a bunch of fun little bars there. It's all walk, like two minutes, like I mean, sorry, two blocks from his house. So we'll walk there. If you like divey, that's your place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like divey. I like divey. Like biker bars. There's actually a biker bar there. Oh man. Oh come on. Horrible brain. The one with the skeleton. It, it, there's there's one right there in downtown where they literally let people bring their bikes in the bar and do burnouts. That's amazing. In the bar. Right? Been around here? In the, the bar, the, from that wall to that wall is how wide the bar is, and you can bring your bike bike right right in front of the bar with people sitting there drinking beers with a band playing and do a burnout and smoke it, the place out. That's insane. Insane. awesome and frightening from, yeah. a, from a liability standpoint. I'm yeah. cringing. It's in down. <laughs> will I have right fun? Will I get ran over? Who knows? I know. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. And then they have a sister bar they open, which another place I don't remember the name. Not too far, and that place is pretty wild. The bartender, well, it's like I think it's a beer place, beer and wine. And the bartender started drinking whiskey in front of me, and I looked at her. I was like, uh, "Is that whiskey? Is that iced tea?" She goes, "You want some?" She goes, "Come with me." She takes me into a back room and starts giving me whiskey. <laughs> it's I mean, that kind of place. It's not sketchy at all. It's not sketchy at all. It was Those awesome. Are the best kind of people. Right? Oh, it's the best day of my life. It was awesome. We had so much fun. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, we got some friends. Some people are gonna be down at Big Top next week, so we hope we'll see you guys here if you happen to be around on Tuesday. So come hang out with us, have a drink. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, people are digging this uh, this angle. Yeah. If you're here, if you're here before like five five thirty. I'm probably in the brew house. Come knock on the door. Come say hello. Please come tell me you saw beer, saw some beer and sunshine. That would be awesome. Where are they from? If you, can you, uh, if you guys are still listening. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, where, where you're are you from. visiting from? We want to know. Tell us. And uh, by the way, our friend uh, Chad Shirk is here from Banny Rooster. The Rooster is here, and they've got some treats. Banny Rooster is one of the awesome food trucks. One of the awesome food trucks we have here. Um, and when they're and around, they're totally posed, yeah. and they've got some killer <laughs> food. The Banny Burger is out of this world. Um, Thank you. Oh, Today yeah. I've got some really special treats for you guys. What do you have? All for beer and sunshine, too, by the way. Yes. So, you know, this outfit's all for beer and sunshine. I am actually the Benny Rooster. I am calling out Peter Griffin right now to let you know if you're anywhere around, it's over. I'll take you out with a matter of seconds. That was a fun a fighting word. Yes, that was a fun episode. So we have uh, oh, oh. it's a wasabi. Musabi. Oh. It's a Hawaiian dish using a spam. I probably said that wrong. Either way, this is smoked watermelon, sushi rice, black sesame seed with homemade wasabi. Now, now uh, two of those for you guys. Oh yeah. Here. I mean, this is speaking Camera to me. I'm super excited. Right right so we could, I so I think we could split. You. We could split these. Yeah, we well, we got something else. We got some tartar with well, some we smoked. Gonna, uh, Whoa. This is smoked avocado and smoked watermelon tartar. Oh my gosh. What do you say, right. Susie? We split this one? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Fitty, fitty. All right, we're going to let you I cut mean, this I'm one. Right. You guys you seem to have a steady hand. Thank you so much, <laughs> Chad. I think there's more to come, so just be prepared. Chad, how, can, how, do, how do people find out where you're at? Uh, check us out on Facebook. Uh, that's where the easiest place because my wife takes care of all that information for us. Uh, Benny Rooster Food Wagon dot com or uh, Benny Rooster Food Wagon Facebook. And it's B A N N I Rooster. Yeah. Give it yeah, a Benny Rooster. And their food is amazing. We're going to be at Calusa on the oh, 27th. Kind of We're going to be here next Tuesday. Bit. We're going to be at Brew Life coming up. Go. We're all I'll over the place, so just check us out. And <laughs> awesome. Let me put some moot food in your plate. Thank you, man. Just keep making Appreciate sushi it. looking type objects, and Wait, I'll keep going. I want to make sure you guys let us oh, know how you think about it. Thanks, guys. That's crazy good. I guess I do need a knife, is it? I don't know if he said it was like a smoked watermelon, but it kind of tastes like it. Yes, I think he said it was. Smoked. Yeah. That's way better than I anticipated. I was like, I'm not really a watermelon Good. person. Is that wasabi, you said? That's straight up fake sushi. Definitely smoked. That's interesting. 
What is that? It's not hot. It's I'm not hot like I'm wasabi. Not, uh, is, is it wasabi? Yeah. I don't think that. It is. It's not hot though. All flavor it? though. It's, wasabi it's delicious. doesn't always have it's really that delicious. heat to it. Oh, God. I'm dying good. to try this thing. That looks nice. We're gonna have to go. We're gonna have. We're gonna have to uh, quarter this bad boy here. Yeah. Smoked watermelon? I didn't even know that was a thing until yeah. right now. Yeah. Did I, he awesome. knew that or, or, or did he say smoked avocado? Or it smoked... No, he said watermelon. Yeah. Yeah. Avocados in this one. Sm yeah, that one's avocados. Oh, that had smoked watermelon. That had smoked avocado. Mmm. You really get the smoky flavor in that. Oh my gosh. That's good. He brought us one night. I think it was like one of the first episodes we did here in season three. It was me and Jackie. And, uh,. He, he brought us uh, the Banny Burger, and the Banny Burger was one of the best hamburgers I've ever had in my life. And it left like heat in your mouth. It was spicy. It was I don't remember all of what he put in it, but it was super incredible, really delicious. And then they do this thing. They do these tacos with uh, roti bread. Oh, I love that. Love that. Yeah, they, they make their own homemade roti bread, and it's great. Did they have like curry with it, like traditional, and make it a taco out of that? Or? Yeah, yes, and, and, and gosh, I can't remember what else is in there. Let's see, it might be on here, actually. Let's see. So the Banny Burger, what I was talking about, grilled beef burger, charred jalapeno relish, house pickles, and lime sour cream. Um... Let me see. Where's the roti? This is amazing. Tacos. No, it honestly it. doesn't even taste like food truck food. It tastes like high quality oh, yeah. restaurant. Yeah, food. yeah. It's really good. It's delicious. You know, that's one thing that uh, some of the people were talking about here is they they a lot of people request like typical bar food. Right. These guys, this isn't your typical bar food. I mean, it eats. It's easy eating stuff. It has a very like southern kind of a barbecue. Everything's got like a barbecue flavor to it. But when you read some of the descriptions, for people that aren't adventurous when it comes to food, eh, it might scare them a little bit. Everything's freaking amazing, super yeah, delicious. That's so good. Um, but I, knew but I, I, I love their stuff. So I don't see the, the roadie on here or a description of it. But they do these roadie tacos that are, that are just really awesome. Maybe really that awesome. has like a limited time offer type thing or something. No, they, they have them all the time. I just, I don't know. I don't, maybe that's it. Spiced yogurt flatbread tortillas. I think that's their description of it. Sounds that technically, good. I think, is the roti bread. Hmm. Yeah, because um, I think if you put roti bread, I wouldn't know what that was. Yeah. So maybe describe it I, that I, way. I, wanna, I think roti bread is like, I think it's an Indian dish. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. an Indian cool. dish. Uh, oh, gosh, they, they do it just great. Awesome. Chef, Chef Paul is is. He's, yeah. he's bad. He's, the he's a bad man. The second he walked out with something that looked like sushi, I got so excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't even describe it. Like, whatever that is, I want it. It's so yeah, good. It's so bad. I'll definitely make sure that we link them in the description of the video as well. It might take a little bit, but um, by, by tomorrow, I'll have all the links for Sato's Last Resort and uh, the food trucks and anything else that you might be interested in that we're talking about tonight. You'll be able to find everything right down below. Cool. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, so, at Motorworks, what, uh, who, who are the owners how to get started what do you what do you guys have uh i don't know is there anything that that when people think of motorworks this comes to mind you know what i mean like uh do you guys have any particular events that you always do that you're known for or a certain style of beer that you're always known for or, or you know we're, we're known for a lot of things what defines so, yeah. motorworks yeah that, that's a hard question, but uh, we're, we're known for a lot of things. So obviously in the beer garden, we do tons of events. So we do uh, weddings and anniversaries and uh, parties for um, you know uh, businesses and whatnot. We do um, a yappy hours. So every third Sunday, we do a big dog adoption, and we have a pet obstacle course set up out there. Um, yeah, we do yeah. a lot of stuff in the beer garden. It's uh, really cool. As far as our beer goes, though, we, you know, we pride ourselves on being a full-spectrum brewery. So we do everything from light lagers up to triple IPA stouts. Uh, we just did a really cool mixed culture beer. I didn't bring that one tonight, though. Uh, but uh, very Belgian influence, you know, done in the traditional way of the Lambic. Um, that beer is awesome. Very proud of that one. Um, but uh, as far as, like, you know, the ones we're most known for uh, in distribution and uh, in general, uh, our Vienna Lager beats win. That's uh, been one of our flagships yeah. for quite some it's time. It's a great beer. I've had it before. I used to buy it. I'm buying the can sometimes. It's good. So V V Twin's been around forever, and we're gonna go ahead and crack that because I need a side beer. Sure, sure, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's about that time. Let's do it. Let me let me get this Ashley gang out of the way. What do you yeah. What are you girls drinking? Uh, pumpkin. Pumpkin oh, jeez, Louise, which is that's right. right. Here, it actually just got released today. If you guys haven't had it already, yes. it's absolutely incredible. It's one of my favorite. 
favorite beers that Big Top does. And it's only seasonal, so it's going to go quickly. So make sure you get in here or you get the cans. We had a guy come in today, and he bought $750 worth of what? pumpkin stokin. Are you serious? Best. Yeah. And I'm not even just saying that because I love you guys. It's it one, is of one of the best uh, pumpkin the beers I've ever had I mean, it is good. in it's, my life. And I am a pumpkin uh, beer person. I think, I think nationally it's ranked in in the top ten. Like, if I'm not mistaken, I... I it's incredible. I could be saying this wrong. That's I, a tutor I, on I think <laughs> I think it's ranked number three by... Um, uh, uh, Great American beer? No, no, not no, not the um that app. Untapped. Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> Untapped. I think on Untapped it's ranked like number three in the country for pumpkin, for, for pumpkin beer. Awesome. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the V twin. Yeah, so this is V twin. Um, this is our flagship lager. Um, we've won a ton of awards for this. Our first year of business, we second batch off the production system. Actually, we took a, a Metal Eye Great American Beer Fest with this one. Uh, it's won in the U.S. Open, and it has like eight or nine, nine medals under its belt now. So wow, that's uh, incredible. This specific beer is one of the most accoladed single beers in our state, which is awesome. Uh, it's been our bread and butter uh, you know, for a long time. It actually is no longer our top-selling beer, uh, so we'll get to that one in a second. It's the one sitting right next to it. Awesome. Uh, Dude, you, this reminds little, me of the uh, conversation we had with uh, Ed from Calusa where he talked about putting beer in context. And putting putting a beer in context really changes everything about the way you experience the beer right. and the way you just described it and the accolades and all that. Now it's like, I ha it's already it's already delicious without me tasting, even though I've had it before, <laughs> right. but I, you know, I have such a terrible memory. I don't remember what it, what it tastes like. I just remember that I liked it, it was easy drinking. Um, I mean, but, it's so, a smooth drink beer. I'm, I'm like impressed sure. already. It's a beach a lot of beer. Flavor. This is like on my beach yes. beer scale. I'm like, yep, yes. beach beer. Perfect. Very true to style. Yeah. Very true to style Vienna lager. So you know, um, yeah, great flavor. Color tie on it. Uh, Munich malts, Vienna malts in it. Very, very clean. Um, you know, we super, do a long super balanced. Off of it. Super very balanced. balanced. Exactly. Smells Goes really great. Good. Honestly, like it's pairing really cool with all of that. Um, so the smoke that we just had off yeah. the food, it's like kind of playing nicely agreed, off of that. Agreed. Very yeah. versatile beer. We use this one in a lot of uh, beer dinners and food pairings. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's definitely a good uh, entry level one. So between this and our Kolsch, when people come into the bar, it's usually like, oh, okay, you want this macro beer? No, you don't. Here, try this. And, and yeah. that, right. So you know, I like Bud Light. What should I get? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I keep this one um, stocked in my fridge at home. There's a few beers I keep stocked in yeah. my fridge at home for my friends. And because, you know, they come through and they're like, oh, I want a beer. And what they expect is some garbage beer. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in his house. house. That's and right. Not in Susie's house. Not in Susie's house. And so usually, depending on what they like, I might crack open different kinds of beers. But I always keep this one on, on stock in my house because it's such a good, like, it's a clean staple. beer. I mean, it's so easy to drink. It's trouble. Because it's like, what, like... What's the percentage? It's 4.7%. It's got a lot of flavor to it. The body's still not, like, huge. It looks, you know, people see the color sometimes, and they're like, oh, my, that's going to be, and it's like, no. Right. They think it's going to be 7, 8% or something. I mean, I feel like right. a little bit of an intimidating color to it. It's not like I mean, it light. looks like Ashley Gang. Ashley Gang is 9.8. It's not far off. Color's yeah. deceiving. Color is very I, I can give you a, a very, very clear beer, or, you know, a very, um, you know, uh, light looking Pilsner beer, yeah. looking color that it's got some kick on it right <laughs> you're like, well, yeah it, it, you can't always go with that it's funny also color. you know like people say the same thing when they uh, uh, see some of our uh, or just see dark beers in general like yeah, you'll see yeah. something like or even Guinness it's like yeah. you know, that, that beer is not high in ABV and people see it and they're like oh it's gonna be so heavy it's right, like no right, it's right. fluffy like <laughs> right it's fluffy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fluffy. <laughs> and put this next to a puppy <laughs> it's a Snoopy. Puppies could drink it. <laughs> Puppies could drink it. I mean, that's one of the things I touched on in one, one of the videos is that you can't go by either the IBUs and you can't go by color because it, it's not always accurate. Like, you could have a very dark beer that's like the smoothest drink you've ever had. Not bitter, not too, not too tasting, you know, strong tasting. But, I mean, it might mess you up later. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it might be trouble. But, yeah, you can't go off of those some of those cues, you know? If you continue your education, it would make me very happy because I, I feel like you deserve to be called doctor. I want to call you doctor. <laughs> She's the beer doctor. I want to call you Dr. Bennett, <laughs> Dr. Susie. <laughs> doctor, she is the beer doctor, actually. She's great. You have to do more videos. And, and anybody who watches this, go back, go, like, go on our Facebook channel and look at Susie's last two videos. If you don't think that she's impressive and she should do, and you don't want to see more videos from her, do not come back. 
Just don't watch the show ever again. That's the door, my friends. Yes. It gets nerdier, you guys. It gets nerdier. Yes, it, but it's good nerdy but stuff. But if you love good beer nerd. and you want to get educated, this is your home. 100%. Yeah. I can go slower. I just get thirsty. Oh, that's oh, all right. Opening right I'm now. a fast drinker right. right. and so eater. Th- this beer actually doesn't exist in the world anymore. Um, we've sold all of it, but uh, what is it? What is so it? sorry, my friends. No, oh, no, no, no. I brought so it for good. a reason. I had a four pack of this tucked uh-huh. away for let me, let me for a reason. Can, no rush, no rush. can I see the label? Is- yeah. So this is our bizarre garden accident series. So this is our Florida Vice series that we do, and we change the fruit off of it. And we do a bunch of different uh, ones of it. Um, so this was our kumquat version. Uh, it's long since gone, but. Um, I had a couple of cans uh, held back, and I figured, hey, why not? Let's drink one tonight. Uh, Thank you for sharing. I yeah, also yeah. brought, and we are uh, we just canned uh, this one up, our uh, passion fruit bazaar oh, um, that we're about to release. But first, we're going to uh, drink the kumquat. So What's the ABV on this? So 3.7. A nice light one. <laughs> right. Yeah, so th- th- this is beach oh. beer through and through. Nice oh. and tart and refreshing oh, nice. and citrusy from the kumquats. Kumquats come from Dade why City. Why would you take this away from us? It'll this be is back. amazing. Oh, it's it, coming it, back. It, okay, I was so like, is this a limited release? It's seasonal? It, uh, so we, cha- we constantly change the fruit oh, off wow. of it. Uh, we usually this do the incredible. kumquat one, though, so that's one that we'll typically, uh, this one will come back around. Uh, we won an award, uh, award for this one also in the can Even just the that's smell of it? Yeah, even the smell, of, I, at the smell, oh, like, I can tell I'm going to love this. You guys, yeah. this sour this, is what's up. Yeah. Oh. I'm a, oh. I love sours. You and me are yeah, I know. We are right there. Oh, hey, I'm in there too. Oh, I'm right, in there right. too. Well, don't tell me, and tell me can join. <laughs> I'm in. This is amazing. I don't know. I so don't this, know if that sounded right. But. This one's awesome. <laughs> I, I, I like so sours. Them. So, um, where did where did I've always wanted to know this? What's with the whole the gearhead theme? What's with Motor Works right. and V Twin? And I mean, <laughs> right, right. Who's, is there somebody who's like a motorcycle person or a car? I mean, obviously V Twin motorcycle, but right. Who's the gearhead in Motorworks? All right, so it, it, our, our names come from a couple of different things, and as you'll see, like, over time, we drifted a little bit with uh, branding and went to a different direction, and I'll go off on a couple of tangents for it. But let's start with why are we called Motorworks? Yeah. And uh, where did some of our original names and all that drive from? All so right. our building was built in 1923. It started off as a Chevy dealership. In the 40s, it was a Hudson car dealership, and that's what our logo pays homage to, uh, which was actually uh, hand-drawn, the original logo, uh, by Frank, who is um, our... Um, uh, founder, him and his wife. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, the name uh, part, uh, partly pays, uh, you know, homage to the building with it being, uh, you know, rooted in, um, uh, you know, cars and uh, right, being a, right. a shop and all that. Uh, Frank also used to build sprint cars in his youth. So all right, all right. Um, that was part of it. And the third part is, it fit us. We're beer heads, we're gear heads, but our entire team, myself beer heads, included. Gear heads, I like it. We build stuff with our hands and that okay. just fit our motif and yeah. it's... Uh, you know where Motorworks came to be and how the name came to be. Awesome. You know we have, we have a motorcycle shop here at, at Big Top. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should. I don't know. Maybe we should trade. No, I no. I, I saw, like a, it. You know, you I saw the boys getting you, uh, you know throwing some skin earlier. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way we're saying hi. They've been doing that. <laughs> I've been to your location and I've kind of walked through the backs and all that stuff like that. And that steep angle up. Yeah. I, I have a tendency of wearing heels. I'm only four foot ten, so I like to wear my heels. And I go through there. I'm walking up that like super steep incline up to the top. There is a lot of fun. <laughs> did we? Uh, did you see what's underneath that when you were on your tour? I know you guys were expanding last time I came through. We did do a big, a big expansion. One. So we, we did a, a huge expansion last year. We added a couple of 150 barrel fermenters, a few more 30s, wow. uh, raised the roof. Um, uh, big, big expansion. We can actually do that same expansion a couple more times in our building. So we have a lot of capacity, wow. expansion, ability in the building that we have, um, which really cool. Uh, but as far as like really fun, and since we're talking about sours, since we love sours, um, underneath that uh, ramp is actually hollowed out. So that's about two foot thick of concrete, and this thing runs for a long time. Is that time. where the barrels are? Uh, that's our barrel agent room. So that coupled with the room next to it that used to be our liquor room, we have a full liquor license too, which you is do. pretty unique for a beer. You do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask uh, you I don't that remember actually. that. Yeah. So what was the decision, decision actually to decide to bring liquor into this? I mean, it's a great space. It's in the best location it could possibly be. And also, 
it's a much classier place than some in the area. So what made you guys decide to pull in that liquor license and have that as an option? Hey guys, before you answer that, Chad actually came back. I think he has some roti tacos for it. I have food round two. All right, these better live up to the hype. Oh, um, oh yeah. Uh, are these the roti tacos? Absolutely. Oh, here, oh, right, did you, you didn't, I'm out of my suit. I feel didn't, better you didn't, already. You didn't hear me talking about this, did you? No, I haven't. I've been working. I was trying. I was talking about how amazing they are. Or on the menu, uh, the spice the yogurt flatbed tortillas. Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's, do it. I'm ready to overeat tonight. All right, so today I have the roadie barbecue taco. Or, you know, we don't like to call them tacos, but... What are they actually called so everyone knows when they come here to order your food? These are smiling swines. Perfect. Smiling swines. Smiling swines. Right. So here's a couple The guys. redneck beans are ridiculous. Those here's are so good. another smiling swan. Okay. This is our all the time menu item with a potato curry. What is that? What is that? Potato, potato curry. Oh, all right. Or a roti taco. Okay, okay. Really nice. I've what had is, that, I think. I think it's delicious. It is. It has a spicy pickled relish uh, topped off with a sour cream, cilantro, and lime sauce with fresh, fresh cilantro and lime. Uh, they're phenomenal. All right. The last but not least, the smoked turkey, smoked pineapple, roti taco. Oh, God. We How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Do you have a much sharper and better too. knife? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a picture once you set them back down. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys run through yeah, those. Yeah. Yeah. And then what was this one right down here? Just so I make sure. Yeah, potato curry. This is potato with a pickled curry. relish. With My mouth is watering like. hard. Yeah, you have berry. You have, you, have, you have pick of the letter berry. And then pick what's the our last one again? And the last one is a smoked turkey, smoked pineapple, homemade vinaigrette mustard sauce with a. And a cilantro. <laughs> you can have them all if you want, Barry. I've had. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Everything's made to order. Scratch, made from scratch. We uh, we make our own roti bread. We make our own everything. I, I damn near grow the potatoes. <laughs> thank you, Chad. Thank yeah. you so much thank for you guys enjoy. Thanks beautiful. for having us, guys. So so good. Good. Yeah, you, you guys thank pick you. whatever you want. I, I'm uh, really lucky. I, I get to eat his food open. all the time. So what is this, this one's right speaking here? to me. This one here. Have, I'm going to have it. I'm playing that waiting? I'm waiting. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's his. I'm not drinking beer, guys. I'm a beer thief. No, I thought about it, and I was like, I've run out of cups. Nikki, which one do you... Which one's calling your name? Anything, Anything that is not spicy. You don't have to knock that back. I can't handle it, but I like uh -oh. it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't but remember I which one's spicy. I didn't say don't finish it. I said don't knock it I back. I think it's probably that <laughs> one. Well, you know, whatever. You so. think this is spicy? It said one of them. I'll wait. Everyone can take a sample. I you guys remember like... which is which? I don't. So, this that one one's the curry. Okay, but this is the spicy that... one? This is the one that has mustard. She wants to stay away from spice. That has mustard. This one is one of the smiling, smiling. Smiling swine? Yeah, there's two smiling swine. Barry, which one do you want? You can have I'm going to let the ladies pick first. Well, they did. They did. Oh, they already did. So you got left with the. And I'll take whichever. I don't care. Thank you. Thank you very much for the beer, both. What is this one, by the way? Um, so this is the, uh, well, this is actually um, a slight iteration off of the one that we're packaging tomorrow. Um, this one will be on draft, and it's a, a side project, same base beer. But uh, mm. this is our uh, passion fruit. This one's passion fruit ginger. Uh, passion fruit ginger. And hibiscus. Uh, oh, I love hibiscus. Oh, I love, man. I love pink beer. Oh, I love man, the color good. pink. Any pink beer, I'm so for it. It's October, it's right? delicious. So. <laughs> that is delicious. So. Oh, this is my jam. I'm the song, the, the loud no, song in the it, background. It's the beer. Sorry, not the song. The beer. I love the hype beer. Is fantastic. Beer. Also, uh, both of these, uh, you know, uh, Florida vices are going to pair awesome with these uh, tacos, like uh, 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 roadie. So tell me, because I remember seeing that you guys did a beer where you put it in the back of what, like an El Camino or something. Yes. I would, all right. I need right. to know more about that. <laughs> wow, that is delicious. I don't remember exactly which one this is, but it's so good. <laughs> All right. And the beer, that that is amazing. Thank you. That's right. really amazing. Gonna, All right, so we're going to do this in a... Do you guys a, do a lot of sours? Uh, we do nail, a decent amount. So it. at any given time, we have 30 beers on draft. Um, 30? That, yeah. Wow. 29 of them are ours. One of them is a cider. Uh, we didn't pull a cidery license Yeah. yet. We're not so that poor yet. It's a different thing to get, um, yeah. It's a whole other everybody seems to have it's a winery license. Everybody so. seems to have somebody else's cider on, you know, on draft. Yeah, uh, there, there's a couple of people, you know, like Three Keys makes theirs locally and all that, and I respect it. Um, it's just something we haven't really tried to uh, uh, dwell into too much. It's definitely um, a different beast. Yeah, it is, and you know, for us, we throw a couple, or you know, guest ones there, and we have a couple of guest mm -hmm. bottles. The cider is also, um, but 
Um, we just haven't uh, wanted to tackle that just yet. All right, so I'm going to jump around and answer a couple of questions because we have, we have like three really cool things that we uh, we're uh, we're talking about. So uh, number one, yes, uh, we were talking about underneath that ramp uh, uh-huh. is a um, our barrel aging room. So that and the liquor room next to it's uh, uh, really really cool. You asked why we pulled a uh, you know a liquor license yeah. and why we would want to do that. Well. Um, as a means of uh, access and education, honestly. So, um, you know, while our liquor license uh, certainly does help and we sell a decent amount of liquor, it's not a, the hugest part of our PMAX. Um, the reason that we pulled it was we didn't want um, someone to say, um, let's say your your wife or your husband or your friend doesn't like uh, beer or doesn't know what real beer is yet. Um, <laughs> so they, so they, they say, you hey. Them down, you take them underneath those stairs and you, that's where you bury them? No, you no, no, no. So just <laughs> them in, in, in the bury them? No, 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 no. So <laughs> There's a tunnel we, and you just drop we them. We lure them in and then we educate them. Like yes, well. exactly. That, that is actually oh. the, the, the real You chain them up and you force feed them beer until they like it. Exactly. Now we make them try a couple of beers and if they complain we'll pour them a gin and tonic but like uh, <laughs> no, true, you guys have that's, a really cool, yes. that's a really cool so idea that's why we did it though is it was a matter of you know we wanted people to be able to come in and have a good time and enjoy the uh, facility but we also wanted to use it as a means of that person that says hey I'm only a wine drinker or I'm only a liquor drinker or whatever we well what don't you like about here what do you like about this give them a couple of samples of something if they don't like it that's okay we'll, we'll you know make them a cocktail or something but uh you know on a general day when we're not like wall-to-wall slam um earlier in the day or whatever like we actually get a good opportunity to communicate with our core customer base and get them to try some stuff and it gets them to expand their palates and it gets them involved and it gets them educated so it's you know really good for the industry as a whole and it's a great way for us to connect to our customer base that's really awesome. so that's, that's why we that makes, the i love it i just i don't thought about it that way yeah, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what craft beer actually is, and I've noticed that um, I've started working on a new place, and I've, I've talked to some of the people around there because I do have a little bit of background working with, with beer and testing some of even your guys' beers in the, in the upcoming lab that's being built, but most people don't quite understand what craft beer is. They think it always has something added. They always think it's blueberry or right. pumpkin or whatever else it is, but they don't understand that there's so many different types of beer, so like the misconception are so huge that it's really nice that you guys one you can cater to them as well but in the meantime you can kind of try to educate them on on the fact that they do have some really awesome beers that that's what you guys have or any of the other that can change their minds. Right. It's like, not just that yellow fizzy stuff anymore. Yeah. There's a lot to it, and we want people to experience it. It's also, again, why we uh, pride ourselves on being a full spectrum brewery. It's why we like to have diversity on our lineup and have, you know, that light beer and that, uh, you know, uh, mid range uh, uh, beer and then some stouts and IPAs and sours and, 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 and let's funky be honest, sours, Barry, and mixed cultures. The, like, the only reason why you guys got a liquor license and offer <laughs> liquor is so that you can get people drunk enough. To try some really good beer that normally, actually, when backwards. they're sober, they wouldn't try. Actually, backwards. We want them to try it while, um, uh, while it's their first drink on their palate uh, beforehand. So usually, we're offering up samples and stuff beforehand. I don't want someone hammered off of it. I want a chance right, to educate them. You know, beforehand. you just shit on my joke, right? You just shit all over my joke. Well, I take that part very seriously. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Totally kidding. I, I take your edu- I take your education very serious. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate it's, it's that. And I think that's Perfect. really an admirable. admirable what you have words here we go um english guys sorry um really amazing what you're doing because there's so many people that are just like i'm a bud light person or a miller light person and that's all i drink and i don't i you know i'm not gonna try anything weird i'm not into these other beers and it's like really a lot of it is based off a conversation and that that was my gateway it was coming to a brewery on a quiet night and having a beer and it's like try this and I'm like I don't like that well shut up and drink it because try it and I'm like oh my god was that, that Colin did Colin make you a beer drinker 100% awesome we can thank him thank you Colin thank you, Colin. Thank you. Um, and it's cool and that's how it starts though it starts yeah. with the conversation and you know what like if you love bourbon or you love gin or whatever that's great I got a lot of vices I love <laughs> yeah. liquids but you know what I want that person to have that uh, you know that opportunity and that, that path and not be as scared by oh beer is this or but you know with how much is out there these days being inundated with too much and just being like no it's like they shut down like we want them trying stuff we want them exploring their palate and uh, you know trying something new and finding that because you know what honestly we are still collectively what 13 14 percent of the industry mm. And we're competing heavily against, uh, you know, uh, liquor and wine as far as gaining new attention from uh, customers. 
I want to educate that customer, even if you know their next drink is a bourbon again. That's great. Let's we get them on the path, though. Let's get them yeah. talking about beer sure, and sure, care. Sure. I mean, there's definitely a craft beer for everyone. So if you haven't found one yet, come you see have, me. Yeah, like <laughs> you guys need to like look because there is something for everyone, and I can promise because I did. I absolutely hated beer. It reminded me of all the parties that I wasn't supposed to be having <laughs> when I was younger, and like when you had to clean up afterwards. That to me was beer, and. Once I started learning a little more about it and tasting a bunch of different things, I think my first experience was with actually from Ed Akusa, and he has such a beautiful way of explaining it. He's, he's a great like, educator. It is like a symphony. He's, he's you know? great to listen to. I mean, he's, yes, he's like, there are there are drums and there are guitars, and you put it all together, and you've got this beautiful music. And he Context. It. But the best, the best thing Ed has taught me is that beer is about context, and that really... It changes everything, you know. Like, it does. It, what, what, I think maybe that that show when we sat and talked to him, we talked about like the first time you ever had craft beer and that memory and what it means. I do, I do. Yeah, I was, I was. Well, the first time I heard a craft beer, I was in my twenties. I was in New York, and it was, and somebody remembered it. Ed freaking remembered it, and I can't remember what it is, but uh, they've heard our it was in, story a couple times. So what's yours? I'd love to so, it's a new thank one. you, Nikki. It's a new one. Thank you. Yes, thank we, you. We told the story about fifteen times. Appreciate it. Like, Tell us your story. You'll, you'll, you'll appreciate this, Mister New York. <laughs> so I was born and raised in Key West. Uh, yeah, wow. and my dad is from Rochester, New York. Rochester, I got it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what was my first beer? Great Lakes. Oh gosh, uh, n- uh, n- Narragansett? No, no, no. Come on, man, that's Massachusetts. Oh, I don't know. I don't Come know. on, man. I don't know. Jenny Cremel, Rochester, New York. <laughs> Jenny Cremel. Jenny, yes, so, yes, yes. Jenny, Jenny Cremel, Cremel, dirt cheap. Never heard of um, it. Sorry, I'm stupid. My wow, bad. damn. I'm from here. I'm going to race here. All right, fair enough. No, I've had it. I've had it. They don't send a lot of it down here, but what happened was my dad was buying, uh, whenever they did send some stuff down to QS, which was few and far between, my dad would just buy like half of a pallet of it because it was inexpensive and it tasted like home to him. So when I was, uh, let's say the drinking age. I moved from QS when I was 18. But let's say when I was uh, originally the drinking age. Yes, yes. That methodical number, yeah. Um, so while uh, while I was uh, of drinking age down there, I was showing up to parties, um, and I was showing up with a uh, Jenny Cream Ale. So uh, I started talking about beer, and after about two parties, I got bored and said, "Get me something else." And my dad bought me some porters. He's like, "How do you feel about these?" I was like, oh, "We're gonna find out." I also drink a lot of scotch with my dad. Uh, so dad's a champ. Yeah, anyway, um, I, I just started talking about, uh, you know, uh, beer with people. So, honestly, it's been something that I was involved with long before uh, even getting in the industry. So, like, even throughout college and grad school and uh, all of that stuff, I was drinking craft beer. So, like, to me, it so was... So, were you, were you born in Key West? Born and raised. Wow. Why were your... Why was your family, uh, who's... Your dad's Military. from New York. Military. Military. Oh, there you go. Okay. That makes sense. So, now how many... So, you, you were born and raised in Key West. Yep. I take it one of your parents was stationed there? Yeah, my dad was stationed down there, and then my mom uh, lived there because she was uh, a military brat. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. Military brats, coolest people in the world, I always say. Right. Um, so you grew up in Key West. You left there when you were 18, and then you don't look too much older than 18. So <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be 18 next week. <laughs> oh, 21 next no, week. No, I mean, you're... you're uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably maybe 30. Uh, 32. 32. Okay, all right. So in that ball. 31 and change. You could yeah. could have said 25, and I believe you. You, yeah. you look like you look like a young guy. All right. So so you've been out of Key West for a while. Um, what was that like though, growing up in Key West? What was that? Just cause, just because I've only been there three, four times, something like that. I don't remember. I've been there so many. I've been there a few times, and every time I got so shit faced. I really couldn't tell you how many times I've been there at this point. Sounds but, like uh, my childhood. Yeah, sounds like your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like growing up in Key West? Uh, we played a lot of sports. We did a lot of things on boats. What sports? And, uh, like, well, like me, I played hockey. With coconuts? Hockey? Everything involved uh, coconuts? Yeah. Did everything hockey. involve coconuts? <laughs> no. Hockey no. with coconuts? Very little coconuts. coconuts. Very little Soccer coconuts. Soccer with coconuts? Very no. little coconuts. Very little coconuts. <laughs> you just put the lime in the coconut and mix it up. There we go. Um, there we go. So what does uh, Jimmy Buffett mean to you? Does that mean anything? You know what? I'm actually a parrot head, so... Are you yeah, really? For what that's worth, uh, I can get down on it. I can get down. It's a good yeah. way to be. And what's your deal? Are you a single guy? Married guy? Married. Married guy? Very happy. Right. Hi, wife. Sorry, ladies. Sorry, ladies. But uh, all right, so Key West was that 
an awesome place to grow up as a kid? I, you know what, I you have brothers and sisters, big family, or little family? Uh, so I grew up with my sister. I have an older brother and then a little brother and little sister too. So yeah. Okay, so kind but, of a big family, bigger than mine. I had just had a brother, so. But uh, so that was fun growing up in Key West. I had a blast. What did you do in Key West as a kid that people growing up in other parts of the country or the world, well, say the country, uh, people that don't grow up in Key West, what's unique to growing up in Key West? Uh, I don't know, easy access to water and, uh, you know, great resources. Okay, so what did you, so did you, did, what did you, are you a water person? Did you like dive a lot? And go, uh, a lot they have lobster season we, we down have, there. Yeah, did you, you said just every year you just dive for lobsters. That's just what we did. Yeah, we did that and cut full pigs and, you know, did all kinds of weird stuff. Really? But, yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Do you go I back and visit? Uh, I haven't been back in, uh, Five years uh, since the brewery opened. Do you have any? Uh, but uh, every time I go down there, my uh, my best friend who still lives down there, um, he um, moved back afterwards, took over the family business and all that. But every time I go down there, now he's like, "So that's a dock and that's a boat," and like explains to me all of the things that because I'm a terrible conk, I don't go home. Apparently. So what drew um, you into MotorWorks? I'm curious to know. Yeah. You said basically you came here and then you've been kind of locked in, in a good way. But I got yeah. tired of working for an engineering firm. I love my old boss. Engineering still like, that's oh, wow. what I did out of college. So, did you uh, study engineering? Nope. Or what? I was a project manager, but okay. I did uh, um, work for an engineering firm, ran a bunch of very, very big projects. Um, the uh, owner of that company, who was my direct oh, boss, is still a very good friend of mine. I had beers with him last Friday. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's so uh, pretty cool. You, how did you end up at Motorworks? I was freelancing. I owned a marketing company, which I've since sold. Um, I was uh, freelancing uh, for a couple of different breweries, um, and uh, it's what my passion was. I was traveling around the country, and I was taking all of my clients who were 35, 40 years my senior to breweries. Uh, <laughs> my expense reports were fun, and it was government <laughs> contracts, so I had a lot of appetizers. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, it was just uh, one of those things. It was something my heart was in. Again, I had been talking and uh, you know dealing with uh, beer since very early on, and it was a, uh, a passion project. And uh, I uh, had uh, once the uh, you know Cheetahs had it first announced uh, um, about opening Motorworks, I just started knocking on their door, and uh, you know uh, several years later, I love the that. board of directors. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's inspirational for me. Is so I'm in marketing as well, and this is my like passion project. Actually, you know. Some of the social media stuff I've been helping out with lately. And yeah. Basically, years, I'm, so I'm her passion project, is, yeah. is what, what she's saying. <laughs> Not to be misconstrued in any way, <laughs> but Beer and Sunshine, you know, I'm kind of Beer and Sunshine. They're now part of Beer and Sunshine. I'm super grateful Susie. for you guys. It's basically Susie you know, for Beer Science and our awesome guests. No, we're, we're, I'm, I'm so super grateful for you guys to be part of this. I really am. Lee, Lee was saying the other day watching your video, she's like, you know, she's like you're really lucky to have her. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I get it. And she says that all the time about you. I really like, see you come through. Like, yeah, you fix all of everything, right? There's, there's, like, almost, yeah. there's actually almost no words. Like with, with Susie's video, where she'd watch it, like, you're really lucky to have her. I'm like, yeah. She watched it. She like realizes everything you're doing. It's like there's almost no words because you're, 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 you're doing great things. And I'll tell you what, if Beer and Sunshine was hiring and he was looking, he'd be hired. <laughs> I, I, I like your story. It's interesting. You're very interesting. And uh, I can see why MotorWorks scooped you up for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and just side note, I have to throw this joke out there because there's something I thought of a while back and I find it hysterical. And uh, Patrick here, who eventually will be on the show because he's really Patrick. funny, he finds it hysterical as well. We have the same sense of humor. But um, so you know that Big Top has um, Conk Republic Key Lime Wheat. Yeah, I don't know. Right? So they have that Key Lime Wheat. All right. So I thought. Because we're coming up with some t-shirt ideas here. We're going to come out with some beer and sunshine shirts here real Very soon. Very soon, guys. Very, Very soon. soon. And I thought the greatest t-shirt in the world, which is probably never going to happen unless <laughs> one is just made for me and my friend. Key lime wheat, concrete public key lime wheat. And, and somewhere on the shirt, it just says Daddy's Little Conk Sucker, maybe yeah. on the front. And on the back, it's the, it's the Conker Public thing. And this is on the why front. I'm the designer, <laughs> and you guys yeah, don't do Daddy's that. Little Conk Sucker? Come on, it's so funny. No, It'll be a shirt just for Tommy. You're a conkhead. I'm a <laughs> conk, but that's just kind of offensive. Don't worry, guys. Uh, I know. I got you. Know. We're going to have PC awesome, beautifully designed shirts that you can wear anywhere. Just need to be, with doesn't need to be PC. Vote now. On, if you want <laughs> Daddy's Little Conk Sucker to be a t shirt, let us know. But it's got to be like low key offensive. Like, we're Come only on, the inside that. group knows it's Fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that's a little too on the nose, man. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's why you got me, my I'm going to ruin your jokes all day. <laughs> <laughs> just, just me and Patrick will have this shirt then. I'll we'll just never wear it in public. Just 
just for you. We'll never wear it in public. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not in the Conquer Limited Public. Limited release, as in two shirts. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Definitely not in the Conquer Public. Oh, See, that's man. my joke. Dad jokes. Come on. Dad jokes. <laughs> Dad jokes. I love dad jokes. Dad jokes. Anyway, <laughs> it's getting right. hot here. Somebody turned up the lights. <laughs> Let's drink more beer. So All right. All right. <laughs> What's next? Oh, we should probably talk uh-huh. about this one though. So yeah, this is um, uh, an iteration of uh, Passion Fruit Bazaar um, okay. that we are canning tomorrow morning. So this is a brand new one. You haven't had this one out yet. Yeah. Or so was like um, this the delayed beer? Yes, it is. Okay. So I saw that on Instagram yeah. and I was like, I want to get this one because you have some kick-ass art. Thank you. Like, as a designer, It's all myself. done in-house by Eric Salston. He's wow. a rock star. Wow. Um, yep. Far better designer. If you look at some of the early stage work, that was a collaboration between me and a couple other people. Um, and they were good. Uh, Eric is a monster. Leave you him alone. What? He's mine. Um, <laughs> no, don't steal my designer. There's a, huge, uh, there's a huge difference between a graphic designer and an artist that can also do things and illustrate them digitally. There's a huge difference. It's, it's two different things. Absolutely. And I do it for a living, so I completely understand. I, I, the, the coolest thing, and uh, it, it was really crazy because uh, when I told him this, his jaw kind of dropped, but uh, the uh, mixed culture that I was telling you about, uh-huh. the Macaron Sauvage that we uh, released a little while back, beautiful beer. Um, someone actually um, had um, reached out about getting that uh, the artwork from that, which was awesome, tattooed on like, oh, Seeing yeah. if they can get a, a version of it like tattooed. Ultimate like, compliment, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Like, Eric, like, yeah. get them some vector art, like now. Yeah. Right. Why Not not? Minute. Oh, vector art! You're speaking my language. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we can get down. Oh, settle down. down. Settle keep down. Settle down. down. <laughs> talking I dirty mean, to Nikki right now. I know. Now. I'm like, talking. He's like, I don't know what the shit this is, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> like, he's like, vector. What the fuck is a vector? And I'm like, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. We'll get out you. We'll figure it out. Yep. Now this is delicious. Yeah, you guys are sour. Like I said, I, I look at a lot of these things too. You see, we go to do the testing on these on these samples, right? And a little for the sample, and the rest for the researchers. One for you, two for me. One for you, two for me. The USF St. Pete yeah, lab, right? Yeah, for, for USF Sarasota Manatee. Yeah, Sarasota Manatee. Sorry, the, the yeah. branding of it from the brewing yeah, school. It's an extension day program, now, correct? Hopefully, the lab should be being built, but. I have had many of your beers come through my hands through testing. And How do I sign up for school where I get to test beer, but then I just like drink the rest of the beer and then keep doing school because I'm, I'm in. I'm in. That's what we call paneling. We do it a couple of times a week. <laughs> yeah. I panel I panel every day when I get to work here at the brewery. Right. So at 8 a.m. I start paneling. <laughs> what paneling. Did we just poured? All right. So uh, this is Pole Friction. So this is our... Um, uh, this is actually our uh, top-selling beer company-wide now. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. And we have a trademark on the name, so that's fun. Um, if you guys didn't oh, hear the full smell. story, the um, oh, God. our um, regular, uh, our, our, uh, our baseline IPA um, used to have a different name. We got hit with the cease and desist letter. Um, and uh, so that beer was... Um, had a different name we had to change it we now hold a federal trademark on intellectual property ale or ipa um so that's our core ipa while our grapefruit iteration of that beer was originally going to be two 30 barrel batches for 2017 two batches it's now over 54 percent of our uh, sales and by the end of the, 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 the aroma of and we have a, a trademark on the name the too. Aroma, the, the, it's, incredible. it's so big on it's, the nose it's incredible. Right, the this nose beer is, is just outrageous. bursting with citrus flavor. Oh, I'm Very told, well balanced, I'm though. Like, yeah. I told Susie in the past, I normally hate a grapefruit beer because really? they are so acidic. Pity. They're, they're pity, they're acidic. This is just smooth. It's I have the grapefruit flavor, but it's not burning my tongue. It's not that acidic. Right. That's a good description. Pity? You know? pity, pity is a good description. Pity, I mean, pity. pity is, the, is like the skin. Oh, I thought Literally, you said pity you would, as in like. Because a pit is very bitter in a fruit, right? Yeah, that's what I was yep, thinking. Yep, correct. So uh, pith, the, the, the pith of it is actually that skin, like the white rind, yes. if you will. Okay. The inner part of so a So pithy is uh, the grapefruit. proper term. Pithy, yes. Sorry, guys. Uh, I said pity as well, because no, we're on the same world scale. We're fine. <laughs> you did say pity, didn't you? I said pity. You? Get pity, bro. Well. See, this is, pity. <laughs> this is something that I would love on a Sunday morning as part of my brunch. Right. With some OJ. Like, add it in there. you got a beer mosa. Oh. Like, this, oh. is this is like, straight up replaced mimosas uh, in my diet. I don't put anything in it. I just nope, drink just this. Yes, yes, yes. But, um, well, man, with a good, with a, like a nice uh, breakfast sandwich. If somebody blindfolded Ooh. me right now, I'd be like, you have a grapefruit for my face. It, it's yeah, it's awesome. amazing. I can't tell you how many. I love citrus and beer. I just love. I it's love it's it. great. It plays so harmoniously with the hops that are in this beer, oh. um, and it has enough malt backbone to where it's not like. Uh, so this is an IPA. Yeah, it's it's That's an IPA. Crazy. People, wow. You'd never believe it's an IPA. 
That is amazing. What's the ABV on that one? 6.3. Oh, yeah. 85, it's balanced. That's, great. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Usually, I, I always say seven is the sweet spot for a very tasty, you know, tasty IPA. Um, this is amazing. This is not really cool. amazing. It's, it, it's all about balance. It's, uh, yeah. Not at all. You know, it, it's if you fun. told me that was three percent, I believe you. That, oh, no. That's good. I was going to say this really is like on that base level, fruity, nice, light beer. Nothing you would think is is going to like. It's, be you could drink a more. couple of them in a session without feeling yeah. fatigued, yeah. and that's really what we wanted to still, go. Still, still full body though. A lot of flavor. Still a lot of flavor. Oh yeah. Bursting with citrus. We use Florida grapefruit in this. Yeah. Um, it's. Um, wow. I see it all over this bear is social a media. People mm. love this beer. It, it's been an absolute blessing. Again, we were going to do two batches of it, and now it is, like, paying our bills. So, uh, like you fantastic. own this name, though. We have a trademark but, on but it. Yes, federal trademark. But nobody's coming after you for any kind of any, any other movie Nope, type. nope, nope. All ours. <laughs> Federally trademarked. See the little R on there? Yes, we're good. Where's the little R? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There it is. Perfect. It's also it's really, really <laughs> Delicious. Um, amazing that you guys listen to your audience, though. I think a lot of, regardless of what industry you're in, whether it's beer, whether it's you know, any anything in the world, a lot of people don't necessarily listen to that demand, and they just do what they want to do. They're like, oh no, it's yeah. limited, we're going to keep it limited, but you're like, no, we need to have this because people want it, and we're going to continue to make that. Well, it, you know what, it, it's finding a balancing act, but when the market speaks to you, listen. Like, shut yeah. up and listen. Yeah, exactly. uh, Absolutely. But there, there's other things, I mean, there, there's brands that we've uh, tried and been proud of, and there, you know, there's some that we've won, like, tons of metals on and they sell great in our tasting room but um you know don't necessarily all to scale the distribution Absolutely. and in this day and age like you know what it's uh, the, the distribution game is completely different and what our tasting room looks like might look very different from what we do out there although this beer murders in our tasting room too i mean you uh, would never guess this is 85 um i at all it's not like it's not that bitter like you would never guess no, at all I've that it was something this this strong <laughs> You guys remember the IBU wars back in like six, seven years ago? Wasn't that a fun time? Now everyone's like, how like rounded and New Englandy can I get this thing? And then mm. before it was like, I have over a hundred IBUs. <laughs> Do y'all not remember that? that? Damn. No, I was, no, I, was I just started drinking the IBU. All right, so fair I, enough. Fair I have a very years, short like, attention span. Yeah, I, I have a terrible same. memory at the same time. So well, I remember because it was funny. I was, you know. It used to be just how much, like, how abusive can I make this you're, you're, uh, idea? You're a fantastic guest, by the way, <laughs> let me tell you, because earlier we were talking, and then Chad showed up at the roadie tacos, and I had to interrupt. After we ate the tacos, you're like, wait a minute, we are talking about this, and then you're like, you addressed everything. You were uh, every except for question. one, which I'm circling back to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but you're still, so you're still yeah. on it, so yeah. you're good. I hit checklist, man. I'm just like, all right, good I got to knock off my good checklist. Also, they're really cool stories. So the questions they're asking are some of my favorite stories and things that have been really, really cool, um, you know, that we've done or, like, that we've got some great notoriety on. Like, you know, we've won t- we have 46 medals on our, um, uh, wow. yeah, it's it's crazy. We won a lot of stuff for it. You got, uh, you know, Big Top's killing it lately too. Congrats on the GABF last week. Thank you, thank or you. Or two thank weeks you. ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, we we won a lot in competitions, which to me is always the most humbling thing. Is what do people think of your beer as blind? Um, but uh, you know, some of these stores are just really cool. So the El Camino, that one is uh, still sitting in barrels. It will be. Um, um, it, so it's our second mixed culture beer that we did. Uh, we actually um, turned. Um, Jose, our lead brewer's El Camino into a cool ship. You guys familiar with the cool ship? This is like the Should I explain Olympics. a cool ship? Cool ship? Yes, uh, they're cool as hell. <laughs> from what is that from? Me and so, Tommy are in the. Uh, you go ahead. No, 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 you go. Let's go. Let's go. Right. So explain. cool ships, like when I was explaining lambics, all right, yeah. they they put them in what they refer to as cool ships, which are these shallow uh, pans essentially where they're open to the environment, where they okay. can kind of be inoculated by whatever kinds of microorganisms are hanging out in okay. the environment. At least that's how it's referred to as, as in Lambics. Do you have these cool ships that are those vessels that they put them in to cool down okay, after the work okay. is, is boiled and gone through their process? All right, all right. How did you guys sense. use the car in that? So, so you absolutely that. nailed it. What a cool ship is is just a big open space, right, um, yes. open fermentation vessel. Sure. Expose um, the elements. Right. To absorb whatever. So what we, we, what we did, may happen. Yes. Um, <laughs> we, we found a food grade liner. It actually started as a joke last summer um, when one of the guys was like. Hey, it's hot as hell. We should uh, turn the truck or the, uh, you know, uh, El Camino into uh, 
into a uh, pool, you know, a little redneck pool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it originally started with that, and uh, for years the guys have been asking, like, Barry, let's get a cool ship, let's get a cool ship. Like, it's, it's not in the budget yet, guys. It's not in the budget yet. Like, I'd love to do it too, but, like, it's not, it's not in the budget. Uh, we got other things we've got to focus on here, right? So um, that came up, and then uh, Jose comes to me and he's like, hey, we just uh, were talking about this. I have this idea. And I was like, find some, find some liner that can do it and it's food grade and, like, you know, we can do this and make sure that it's, uh, you know, sanitary and we can do what we need to do with it. Uh, he's like, all right, cool. So he comes back a little bit later. He's like, I found this stuff. Uh, all right, cool. So I reach out to the guy. Um, all right, we can afford this. So we, we got this liner, awesome, uh, you know, really, really good stuff. It's actually uh, largely used for uh, marijuana growth in, like, grow houses. And okay. Uh, found this food grade, um, for, uh, grade liner, and uh, we tur- uh, literally, like, wrapped Jose's bed and yep. made it into a big pool, essentially. Okay. Just a, okay. you know, could hold liquid in it. Turns out that El Camino holds exactly three and a half barrels, too, which is the size of our pilot system. Nice. So up to the uh, rear wall. So we uh, we all came in, uh, brewed it on the coldest day of the year last year, which was in January, early January. Or, yeah, early January. Um, knocked out into it, and then we pushed the El Camino into the beer garden and let it inoculate in the beer garden. What year is this El Camino, by the way? 74, I think. Really? This is like a nice El Camino? No. I mean, it's no. nice to us. <laughs> it made a cool beer. <laughs> it's not like a show car or something? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, is, it, is it cool? It's it Jose's like cool, daily. It's awesome, but it's Jose's daily cool. driver. Oh, really? Yeah. Good this, for, this is like a work and do. This is like cool. Between that and his bike. Awesome, Jose. No, no, no. This, this like was it. just like, you, this was just a thing. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of notoriety on this. Got some national press on it. It was awesome. Uh, the beer's turning out great. We've been pulling samples off of it. and uh, How running you get panels. national press from where? Uh, so, uh, uh, Food and Wine Magazine did a piece on it. Beer and Brewing uh, uh, did a piece on it. Craftbeer.com, uh, which is the uh, Brewers Association, really, uh, really? did a piece on it. Um, so, we got some love on this one. Cool, that's uh, awesome. And the beer's coming along nice. Thank you. Um, and uh, it's coming along nicely. It's going to be bottled. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll release it. We're going to do just like we did with the um, uh, La Caron Sauvage. Uh, so, we're going to do it in the... Um, 750 milliliter uh, green bottle cork and cap. Like the bigger ones. Um, yeah, so we, okay. we did it very very traditional um, off the last one. We're going to do it with this, uh, this one as well. Uh, cork and cap, full nine. Like. This is nice. I'm so thing. excited. It's the coldest day of the year, so this has been over a year in the making? Uh, almost? It'll be a year in January, and um, we're um, people keep asking me when we're going to package it, and I said when the beer's ready. Um, <laughs> so it's coming along nicely, ready. but we are not um, ready to package it. And it will tell us... Um, when it's ready. That's awesome. Wow. So, I love something so that has a story. <laughs> yes. I, I, I've never seen it, like through, you know, like Facebook and stuff like that. And I'm like, wait, I'm like, they're making a beer in the back of this car. Right. And I thought it was so funny. And the more it was like, I thought about it, I'm like, oh my God, they're making a beer in the back of this car. And like, then I got really excited. So I'm like, it, I it, want it is. This and it's beer. Really cool. And, you, and I think you'll dig it. What, so, so what is the plan for the beer once it's ready? We're going to bottle all of it and we're going to sell it to customers. <laughs> oh, one million dollars! No, but hey. Hey, this comes back to your point. Hey, Marilyn. There's a saying at my job or in most marketing jobs, I would say. It's, it's a heart and it's in half and it has context and it has content. And they're half and half. So co- with context and content, you can sell anything. You know yeah. what I mean? If yeah. you have a story, people want to buy a story. They don't want to just buy a product. They want to buy your story and they want to buy the effort and the hours and the years. And that's what makes it exciting. That's how you build up the hype. And that's how you build up everything. It's like people want the passion behind it, the struggles, the everything. Absolutely. And that's what makes it amazing. And that's what's going to make you have a line running out your door the day that you go to sell that beer. And the product has to be on point. If it's not, we throw it down the drain. But uh, we are um, well, not, pretty not, excited not about in my neighborhood. Point. You just give it to me, and I'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have, we have beer all the time here that, you know, just doesn't make the cut. Either we're canning it, and the seals are bad, or it's been around too long, or the heat got to it, whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 guys, I got this. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I, I take that beer, <laughs> and I give it to my neighbors, and I take it home, and I drink it. I'm the trash beer guy. So the beer that would normally get thrown away... I'm the guy. But I'm the guy. I'm a human recycling machine. So we're doing the, the better good for the environment, I would 
I'm, I'm, you know, I'm making the world a better place every time I drink a trash beer. That's <laughs> I'm my so thing. glad that you came out and shared these beers with us. They're delicious, and they're some of my favorite like lineups that you guys have at Warner Works. I wish I could get out, get out there more. I live in Northport, so it's a bit of a bit of a drive for me. It's a bit but, of a drive home. But drive I stock these. Up, though, from, <laughs> I go to Total Wine, and I just pick up what I need, and I bring it home. Yep. And I don't let anybody at my house drink anything Crappy. It ain't happening. <laughs> Not in Susie's house. Not in my You're house. You're a good person, Susie. You're at salt of the earth. I mean that. Then yeah. like everything you're saying right now, and uh, it's all respectable, you know? Everybody should try to be a little bit more yeah. like Susie. Have some respect for your friends, for your environment, <laughs> for, your for your neighborhood, for the for the for society, the <laughs> for the world. Some beers from Motorworks and from, from all your local breweries, especially from Big Top as well, but these things are delicious. They're super delicious. I'm, I'm enjoying this so much. Seriously though, watch her first two videos. She's gonna do more, I guarantee it. She's definitely going to. Because she's awesome. I'm going to uh, make a theme song, you know, like the weird science thing. I'm going to make a beer science theme song. That's <laughs> Listen, what I had already. Like we have a beer and sunshine song. I know, but we I have to like get Susie it uh, worked in. I, need, I want it to be just <laughs> up there with like Bill Nye the science guy. Bill. Something like Susie, that. Yes. Susie, Susie, yes. Susie. Like, if you can hook me up. I we're crossover like, between that Dr. and Dr. Bennett. Yeah, Dr. Bennett knows what she's talking about. Listen to her. Trust me. She's homegrown right here. She told you earlier. Didn't like beer, and now she's she's an expert, a beer expert. She's a beer aficionado, um, beerologist. Uh, beerologist. I like that whatever. term. I'm, I'm gonna make a shirt. She is. She actually is. She really is. Man, so she what applied to the Tampa Bay Beer Week uh, Cicerone Scholarship we do every March. What is it? So Tampa Bay Beer Week every um, uh, March we do a uh, Cicerone uh, Scholarship and we really? pay for um, the certified Cicerone really? for uh, one applicant. It's so uh, you write a couple of essays. Okay. Uh, we do it every year. Now listen, I that's awesome. I went because I was saying, going to say <laughs> Cicerone. She should have her own like beer, uh, you know. Hey, they all add up, man. I collect degrees. She probably does but, too. But your what your your scholarship thing? How does that work? How do you get to? How do you win it? Uh, What's the competition? So about? during t uh, before Temp Baby Week, we'll announce it um, on on the stuff. By the way, I'm the chair of Temp Baby Week. Uh, but um, uh, we do uh, just a scholarship, and every year we pay for it. It's uh, for someone's test. All they have to do is uh, write a couple of essays about how it helps uh, them in their career. And we put the actual specifics off of like okay. what the requests are for it. But you uh, do a little write up off of that and uh, sign up for the uh, uh, the test. And uh, when you actually uh, go to do the sign up for it, uh, we pay for it. I feel um, like her be entering the contest. Susie be, and that's where the actual. I feel like she'd be cheating. Cicero, she'd be cheating just by entering. <laughs> she'd be cheating just by entering. No, I think she she'd be a great candidate. If she doesn't win. It's fixed. It's, it's <laughs> fixed. It's rigged. If she enters and she doesn't win, it's rigged. They lose all credibility. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, kidding. Need I'm more joking. Information yeah, we keep it blind, actually. So we, um, and myself included, but we have um, the secretary of the board um, post all of the uh, applicants out there without name, just the write-ups of it, and then we collectively, as a board, vote on our. Um, is there, our an, is there and a, How many times have we done this? How many times have we done it? Yeah. Um, so we've done it for the last uh, three years. Now. Have you been involved all three times? Uh, two of them. Two of them. Yeah. So in the in the last two that you were in, in, involved in, who's of the like the winners? Who stuck out to you and why? Um, honestly, it's it's, uh, it's variable. The, the biggest thing for it is telling your story. You know, I I, I will say that. The, what was it about a, the stories that hooked you? Uh, they were all completely different. It, it was about how the, the the biggest ones that grasped were the ones that actually had like a really good stern hey this is what is going to uh, uh how this is going to benefit in my career why doing this program why i believe in the program why i think it matters um and uh you know just telling your story and what you're trying to do with it you gotcha know? gotcha gotcha cool if you're like hey i'm a bartender and i'm trying to break into the industry that's great you better tell why and everything you're doing with it um, if you're someone that's in the industry, you're a beer rep, or you're, you know, uh, working on the science side of it, or you're a brewer, or you're a cellarman, or something like that, tell your story. You know, like, tell it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, either, either way, I still feel like yeah, Susie's gonna win if she enters. You would have to. I was gonna ask and open it up. I don't know if anyone wants to ask 
those questions, but we obviously have Barry from MotorWorks here. If you guys have any questions about MotorWorks or anything you want to know, now is the time. Because I think we're running to that mark where it's about time to wrap up. Um, so we'll wait a couple minutes, maybe crack another. I'll, drink. Like, I'll drink a 3.7% Berliner uh, Florida Ice. Let's do it. For MotorWorks or for Barry, please ask let questions. Us know, and we'd love to have your questions. Did, did you have any more beers? Uh, any other stuff you wanted to? Oh, you know what? I show the good people. Um, here. Okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't planning on cracking it, but I did bring a can of lavender. What did you bring? Or oh, lavender. I had that actually Saturday in your tap room. Oh, nice. Really? It. You can have more yeah, of it. My friend, actually, my friend's 30th birthday was there Saturday. So, Lindsay, who is normally our uh, back end camera girl that I bribe to come here every weekend, it was her 30th birthday, which we surprised her on Saturday at Waterworks. It's one of her favorite breweries. <laughs> And it was a great time. Um, Ooh, trying to make beers. Right. I don't get out there very often because I live pretty far away. <laughs> but I loved it. I have this in my fridge at home as well. Yeah, we so this was a um, you know it's a limited release. Limited it? release, yeah. We did a one time dropout to distribution for the year. We'll do it again next Beautiful year. Beautiful can too. Thank That's you. what matters Eric. to me. And Close. Eric just mocks her. Oh my god. So uh um, Susie's fan should be right back. I'll be right back, you guys. I'm gonna go grab some She's, she's gonna go take care Can of some I business. Can I comments if you don't? Oh, let's yeah. pass. Okay. Yeah, you want this? No, I'm. She wants the comments, comments. not the uh, oh, oh, oh. comments. The roadies. Friend. She's trying to make sure. <laughs> I thought you were gonna eat her taco. There's because... some lavender for you. I'd You're like feeling eat. frisky, and there's some sure. pot for Leonard for you. Oh. We got some good feedback that I'll throw out. Also, what? Lindsay, it's her birthday today. The one that usually mans. Well, happy camera birthday, on Lindsay. Us. Happy birthday, Lindsay. Thank you so much for everything you do for us. She said, love this camera angle. Feel like I'm having a beer with you guys. Super excited. Thank so to get her you. Approval, compliment. She's a videographer. Yeah. She's means awesome. the world to me. Um, so it looks like we got some more lectures, but no questions. So do we want to talk about this and, lavender? And by the way, one? anybody that's watching us, we're doing the show on both Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. And YouTube seems to have a little bit different look and feel. Uh, if you get a chance to watch the show on YouTube... Give us your feedback. Let us know what you think about it because uh, maybe we need to, you know, spend a little bit more energy on YouTube. I don't know. Please let us know. Tell us what you think. Step up our game, so let us know. But thank you, Lindsay. Happy birthday. Yep. And uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. We miss you here tonight. Too bad you're not here. Oh. Lavender. So what's lavender about? It's that's smooth, kind of creamy. So it's it's, good. it's a Scottish shell base. Uh, we add food grade lavender to it, and um, yeah, we've won a couple of medals for that one also. So it's one of uh, the best of craft beer and uh, one or two other uh, competitions also. But that's one that, uh, you know, we're, there's not many people uh, messing with uh, food grade lavender in a production size uh, uh, batch of beer. And it's one we've done for a number of years, and it's kind of got a really cool cult following. Um, yeah. So this year we decided to can it for the first time and uh, sold it out to distribution in every account that had it. So um, and we did a couple hundred cases of it, sent it out um, uh, just to the Bay Area, and um, it uh, went into a, um, you know some retailers, and it was all sold out within a month. Um, it, it's a very retail. it's Real a very cool. easy to drink. It's good. To, uh, it's an interesting flavor. It sits kind of right on the middle of the tongue for yeah. me. Yep. Yeah. Right on the middle of the tongue, just kind of sits there and. It's very consistent. You it's know, a it's great like food from, from the first sip to the, you know, to, to, as you swallow it, like, it doesn't really have an, a, a taste in the back of my, my mouth. Yeah. It's just all right there in the middle of my tongue, and it's just very consistent. Very very much in the mid palate. Yeah. Um, if you ever get a chance to try this alongside something with, like, feta in it, that's one of my favorite uh, really? food pairings. Really? Um, so, I've, uh, like, this lo alongside, like, a, a, a greek influenced she's slider back. with, like, feta. And she's um, bad! It's uh, just... Fantastic. That's some lavender ale for you in that cup. This one here, lavender? Yeah. Oh. I'm going to make your drive back to Northport. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say, too, lavender is one of those things that's very experimental. A lot of people don't like to play with it. Yep. Because it can go very oh, wrong so very bad. fast. But anything, if you do it right, it's amazing. Right. Because I think when someone thinks lavender, immediately they're thinking it's soapy, it's it's not going to taste good. It's, but, like, some of the best things I've ever tasted, whether it's beer or anything, is, like, lavender vanilla combinations or, like, it's it's that small hint and, like, enough of it where you can smell it, you can taste it, but you're not, like, straight up drinking, like, When I think, when I think soap, lavender, I think you know? purple. Yeah. Lavender I mean, chocolate, nice. like, those are oh, uh, yeah. really cool. Yeah. It's definitely different, especially I think for you know the average consumer to be like lavender and good or anything that's a floral 
type of scent. Even hibiscus, the first time I had that, I was like, is that going to taste good? But, oh my God. Again, hibiscus can get astringent too, but yeah. like, you know, it, it's interesting. So this one, again, it's got such a cult following. There's so many people that have used this in, you know, so many uh, beer dinners and whatnot. But there, it, it's, oh, yeah. it, it it's does great, not, you know, not to uh, break down uh, specific demographics or anything like that, because anyone should drink any beer that, you know, they want. Uh, but this does phenomenal with the female demographic and specifically with the wine drinking demographic that says that they don't often, uh, um, you know, like beers. Um, you it's kind of got like Venice you character You could have just said it. chicks dig it. <laughs> so <laughs> with this one here, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm more By the way, uh, if, anybody, way more if there are any joke writers out there, I'm hiring. <laughs> so maybe I missed it, but tell me more about the alcohol <laughs> content and the IBUs in this. Um, don't remember the IBUs offhand. It's not high. It, that's okay. obviously not an IBU focused beer. Right. It's a, I want to say it's in like the uh, 20s or uh, 30s. Um, I used to remember that off the top of my head. But apparently, I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> but I'm done. Uh, but um, ABV is in the mid sixes, um, and it is um, uh, it's a Scottish ale base. So it's got a, a nice malt body behind it to uh, you know to stand up to. It. Oh, it smells it really, so really good. Nice. Lavender. I mean, you smell it in there. I feel relaxed already. I'm ready I know, to go I'm take like, a bath. I'm, like a nap. <laughs> I'm ready to go, like, wind down. Paint a picture. Day. Paint a picture, Susie. Paint a oh, picture. This is beautiful. <laughs> I feel like he spoiled us tonight, Mary. You yeah, might have spoiled I feel like us you 100%. Did. You got me some sours. You got some good stuff there with the pulp friction, the beach wind. Yeah. And now the lavender. What's this one called? Lavender ale, straight up. Like, it's la- <laughs> it's struggled a, it's with so t- trying to find a uh, you know a name for it for the longest time, and I was like, everyone just knows it's our lavender ale. It's lavender ale. Well, so, I mean, let's, right. you know, this this is absolutely delicious. Let's end on a high note because. Most of our viewers seem to have a very short attention span anyway, <laughs> you know. But uh, this has been a great time, a great conversation. You've been very generous to bring these beers yeah. and uh, tell us about Motorworks. We definitely have to come there and uh, maybe do a little beer and sunshine episode there sometime. Maybe a special edition. That would be awesome. Garden. Do us some outside yes, when it's nice garden. and cool, you right. know, as it starts to get cool here in Florida. Um, and again, you know, hey, if you want to watch our show, check us out here on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Um Follow our Instagram. We've got a lot of really great photos on there, a lot of cool images. We'll post some videos and stuff like that. But it really give you an idea of some of the great beers that are here in the Tampa Bay area and in Florida, stuff that's available here locally. In the, uh, we're in the Sarasota, Bradenton area. Um, and uh, tune in every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock for a live show. And uh, uh, yeah, on Facebook and, and, and YouTube, whatever. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Barry. Thanks for showing up yes, tonight. Thank you, Barry. Thanks, Barry. Thank, you thank you, much, Ryan. Everybody thank knows. You so much. It's not hard to find us. Everything is at Beer and Sunshine. It's not complicated. Yeah. Everything, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, at Beer and Sunshine. Please follow us. Give us a like. And if you really want to stay tuned to everything, make sure you hit the bell to get notifications every week. Tuesday, 7 o'clock, like Tommy said, on Facebook Live. We'll be here, and we would love if you guys would tune in. And thank you again, Barry, for being here with us. And yes, thanks awesome. for the yeah, show. Super thank fun, you. dude. You were awesome. And so, now things are going to so get awkward as we shut things down. Yeah, sorry, you guys. We don't have a camera mind tonight. But <laughs> yeah, watch us push but buttons. Shut this down. And this is all a dream. Funny, guys. <laughs> Everything else after this is oh, thing before. You know? My microphone's been unplugged the whole time. Uh-oh. It's okay. Tommy's loud enough for me. <laughs> I'll get that one. I'll get that one, guys. Sorry. Apologies in advance. <laughs> You're, uh, somebody's uh, stubby guys down there. <laughs> I'm still hooked up. All right. I don't see how that's possible. You could hear the